coffee, healthy or unhealthy? In today's video, I'm going to be looking at the scientific research behind coffee, discussing the long-term health effects of drinking coffee, and how much coffee we should drink every day for optimal health. So that by the end of this video, you'll know all about the long-term health effects of drinking coffee. G'day there, I'm Jesse Crow, the traveling scientist, and after spending years studying pharmacology, I'm here to help you live smarter, happier, and healthier lives. How do you like your coffee? Let us know in the comment section down below. Maybe you're an instant coffee guy. Maybe you're a French press gal. Maybe you like pumpkin spice lattes. No judgment. But let us know in the comment section down below because I can tell you that I recently went from not drinking coffee at all to drinking coffee every single day. Do you want to know why I drink coffee now? Well, I'm going to tell you in just a minute. But first, I made an e-booklet for you guys about living happier and healthier every single day it's called The 7 Scientific Strategies and it's totally free. You can download it anytime from the description just below. So the active ingredient in coffee is caffeine, which is structurally similar to adenosine, which is a molecule in our brains that inhibits arousal and makes us sleepy. The caffeine in coffee antagonizes adenosine by binding to its receptors and blocking its action, thereby reducing fatigue and increasing alertness. Basically, coffee wakes you up. As well as caffeine, coffee contains hundreds of other biologically active compounds, including polyphenols, alkaloids, melanidins, magnesium, potassium, B vitamins. Your daily cup of coffee has so many different compounds that affect your body in so many different ways. So let's look at the scientific research behind this simple cup of coffee. Weight loss. Coffee reduces your appetite while increasing your metabolism and thermogenesis, and it does this by stimulating the sympathetic nervous system. As a result, regular coffee intake is associated with a slight reduction in weight, but the effect is minimal. You're probably not going to lose 100 pounds by switching to a high coffee diet. Lifespan. Another consideration is that eating less food is associated with living longer. So if coffee reduces your appetite and you eat less, you will live longer. And a 10 year study involving over half a million people showed that drinking coffee regularly was associated with reduced mortality and living longer. Is that a coincidence? It's hard to say. Happiness. Coffee helps fight depression, and many studies have proven that people who drink coffee regularly are more happy and more active than people that don't drink coffee. Maybe it's the neuroprotective effect from all the antioxidants in coffee, or maybe it's just the nice feeling you get by sitting down with a warm beverage, or maybe it's both. But studies have also proven that people that drink coffee regularly are less likely to commit suicide. So if you're struggling with depression or considering suicide, have a drink of coffee and watch some of my videos on depression. It could really help you out. Chronic diseases. Coffee reduces your risk of suffering from neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and dementia. It's believed that regular caffeine consumption stimulates your brain, reducing the loss of neurons. It's like exercise for your brain, but you don't have to do anything. You just sit there and drink coffee. Insomnia. Coffee can make sleep really challenging, and sleep is important for our overall health. Remember what I said about caffeine? You remember? Basically, coffee wakes you up. It doesn't help you relax. It makes you think, and when you can't stop thinking, you ain't sleeping. However, there is a simple solution to this. Don't drink coffee before going to bed. Oh my God, Jesse, thank you so much for telling me that. Right? But seriously, caffeine is metabolized from your body and most of it is gone within eight hours. So if you go to bed at 8 p.m. for example, no more coffee after midday, okay? Anxiety. Coffee can promote stress and anxiety, which seems weird because coffee helps with depression. But by stimulating our sympathetic nervous system, coffee activates the fight or flight response. Our eyes dilate, our muscles start twitching, 
heart beats faster, a breath deepens, and a brain goes into overdrive. If you struggle with anxiety or stress, coffee is probably just going to make that worse. Now I've made a lot of videos about anxiety, you can check those out to become less anxious today, and maybe switch to decaf coffee. Finally, cholesterol. Unfiltered coffee contains diterpenes, which will increase your cholesterol and slightly increase your risk of heart attack and stroke in the long term. Filtered coffee, like boring old drip coffee, actually has the diterpenes filtered out, so it's going to be healthier for you than a fancy espresso or a French press coffee, which is technically unfiltered coffee, and it's going to be bad for your cholesterol in the long term. Keep in mind that there's a lot to consider. Coffee type, brew strength, cup size, as well as the amount of sugar, milk and cream that you have with your coffee is all going to impact the long-term health effects. But in general, drinking quality filtered black coffee is going to be healthier than smashing a grande caramel macchiato from Starbucks, so keep that in mind. And if you're wondering how much coffee you should be consuming, the average cup of coffee contains 100 milligrams of caffeine, and the recommended daily dose of caffeine is 400 milligrams max. So if you have more than four cups of coffee a day, you're gonna start experiencing some negative effects. That's probably too much. But everybody's different, and everyone can tolerate different amounts of caffeine, so you do you. Coffee can help you to lose weight, live longer, happier, and healthier but it can also promote anxiety, sleeplessness, and increase your cholesterol slightly. Ultimately, drinking quality coffee in moderation can be considered part of a healthy lifestyle, and that is why I've started drinking coffee every day. So there you go. Don't forget to download my free e-booklet about living happier and healthier every single day. It's just in the description down below. It's totally free. Anyway, that's all for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button down below and let me know how you enjoy your coffee and what you think about it in the comment section down below. Finally, next week's video is gonna be all about Kratom. What is it and is it safe to drink? We'll find out next week. Make sure you subscribe to more Traveling Science every single week. See you guys next Science Sunday. Cheers. As well as how much milk, sugar and cream cup of coffee, including penif neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative diseases, neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, 